St. Patrick and the Peddler by Margaret Hodges, paintings by Paul Brett Johnson. For my shield this day I call, heaven's might, sun's brightness, moon's brightness, fire's glory, lightning's swiftness, wind's wildness, ocean's depth, earth's solidity, rock's immobility from St. Patrick's Breastplate, translated from an old Irish text. There was once a poor peddler who tramped the roads of Ireland with a pack on his back, selling his wares from place to place. He had no wife, nor horse, nor dog to keep him company, and at night he slept alone in a wee cabin on a farm near Ballymena. It was a sleepy little town in those days, but it was famous all the same, because St. Patrick had once been a shepherd on a hillside nearby. Poor as he was, the peddler gave a welcome to anyone who stopped at his door. My house is your house, he would say, and St. Patrick himself may have lived in one no grander than mine. Who knows, he may have lived in this very cabin. Come in and warm yourself. Have a spoonful of porridge. Did St. Patrick have an old porridge pot like yours? The children would ask. Like as not, said the peddler. He was only a slave in those days, do you see? Did his porridge pot have letters around it like yours? Asked one little lad. What do they say? I don't know what they say, for it's all in Latin and I've never even learned to read my own language, said the peddler. No more could Patrick when he was brought to Ireland. They were all pagans here in those days, and no one could read it but the Druids, who kept their learning secret in writing of their own, for they were magicians as well as pagan priests. It's different now. Ask your priest to teach you to read, and he will do it, Danny. He might even teach you the Latin. I want to read what it says on your porridge pot, said Danny. No doubt you will, said the peddler. The next year, the potato crop failed, and hard times came to the peddler, for people were too poor to buy needles and pins or thread or clay pipes or combs or other bits and pieces that he sold. Often he gave away his goods in sheer despair. Take this needle and spool of thread, he would say to a mother. You need them to mend your baby's blanket. To Danny, he said, keep the pencil, and may it help you to read and write before I see you again. Day after day, week after week, the peddler trudged about from dawn to dark without selling so much as a pin. One night he came back to his cabin, dog tired and foot sore, and boiled the last of his porridge in his old iron pot. It made no more than a cupful, and he went to bed hungry. At last he fell asleep, and as he slept he dreamed a dream. He saw St. Patrick standing at the cabin door, and St. Patrick said, Peddler, Peddler of Ballymena. Aye, sir, said the peddler, still dreaming. What do you want of me? The saint spoke again, and his voice came soft and gentle to the ears of the peddler as the wind blowing through the door crack. Go to the city of Dublin and stand on the bridge that crosses the river Liffey. There you will hear what you were meant to hear. When the peddler woke, he remembered his dream, but he said to himself, 
go to the city of Dublin. I have never been so far in all my life. That day he took to the roads on an empty stomach, walking no farther than to Ballymena, and again he sold nothing all day long. At nightfall he had a cup of water for dinner and lay down, saying, I'm in for a bad night. No man can sleep when he's empty as a drum. But late at night he slept and dreamed. There was St. Patrick again, well into the cabin this time, and his voice was like the call of a nightbird. Go to Dublin and wait on the bridge. There you will hear a good thing. But in the morning the peddler said, I cannot walk to Dublin. I have no more strength than will take me to Ballymena. And he tightened his belt and tramped to the town and back, not a penny the richer. Well, if I must starve to death, let them find me clean and decent, said the peddler, and he washed himself and lay down to rest. Toward morning he began to dream, and he saw St. Patrick standing beside him, shaking his staff. Peddler of Ballymena, he shouted, and his voice trumpeted in the ears of the peddler. Rise from your bed and go to Dublin. Stand on the bridge that crosses the river Liffey. There you will hear what you must know. The peddler leaped from his bed, out the door, and off down the road to Dublin. On and on he went, mile after mile, farther than he had ever gone in his life, and then farther. Do not ask me how he did it, but at long last he came to Dublin and saw the river Liffey, its dark shining water flowing over golden sand. The peddler came to a halt and looked about him. People came and went on the bridge, and he stared into each face, but not a soul spoke to him. At the end of the bridge was a butcher shop with the fat butcher leaning in his doorway, his arms folded across his apron. He, too, looked into each face that passed, for he needed customers, but he looked in vain. Times were as hard in Dublin as at Ballymena. The sun went up in the sky and down again. The butcher closed his shop and walked across the street. Good evening to you, stranger, says he. Are you looking for someone? You've been here all day. I have that, says the peddler. And what may be your business on the bridge? No business, says the peddler. You would be a great fool to stand here all day for no reason, says the butcher. Out with it, man, what brought you here? To tell you the truth, answered the peddler, I dreamed three nights that St. Patrick told me to come to Dublin and wait on the bridge over the River Liffey. He said I would hear good news. The butcher laughed long and loud, and how far have you come? I don't know, said the peddler. A long way. And all for a dream, said the butcher, shaking his head. Let me tell you, fellow, I had a dream myself. Three nights in a row, I dreamed that St. Patrick told me to dig under an old iron pot in a poor cabin near Ballymena, where I would find a treasure. Ballymena, nonsense! It's a week's journey. And all for a dream? The peddler said not a word. 
he turned away and started back to Ballymena. How he got there, I cannot be telling you, but he lost no time. No sooner was he home than he moved his old iron pot from the hearth and began to dig. Believe me or not, he dug up another iron pot. And when he pried up the lid, what did he find but gold heaped up to the brim? Coins and rings and cups old enough to have been there since St. Patrick's Day. I shouldn't wonder. While the peddler was staring at the treasure, in came Danny. What have you got there, peddler? he asked in amazement. I've got what St. Patrick promised me, answered the peddler. And I've got what you promised me, said Danny. And I have got what you promised me, said Danny. The priest is teaching me to read and write, and he told me the meaning of the words on your iron pot. They say, here I stand, old and good, with something better under me. From that day on, the peddler was a rich man. He got a dog and a horse and a beautiful wife. What man could ask for more? He gave freely to the poor, and to the end of his life, children came to sit by his hearth with the peddler's own children while he told stories about St. Patrick. He always ended with these words. St. Patrick was a better man than tongue can tell. By the king that is above me, he was three times better than all I can say, and if he ever comes calling again, he'll find a hundred thousand welcomes.